I received a somewhat amusing and interesting request this week because it came from a professional chef and I wondered why is he asking me to cook something? I'm not a professional chef. I've never been to culinary school. I'm just a cook in a kitchen in a mobile home in a trailer park. That's all I am. But what he asked for was, was it intrigued me. It's called pozole. I had never heard of it. I had to look it up. It's a Mexican soup. I don't like Mexican food. At least I haven't had good experience with it so far. But, okay, it is winter. I like making soups in winter. Let's look into it further. It's made with some form of meat, typically pork, beans, and something called hominy. Hominy. I've never cooked with hominy before. I thought of hominy as being a purely Mexican ingredient. But when I did more research, I always do a lot of research when I do these recipes. One of my food encyclopedias says that hominy was one of the first food gifts from the Native Americans to the colonists. Okay, well, I grew up in New England. I'm supposedly part Indian, part Native American. The Nipmuc tribe of eastern Massachusetts, they would have lived in close proximity with the colonists, so maybe I have some ancestral connection to hominy. What do I know? As I researched more and more recipes, I started to see some possibilities. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to start the day before because I have some prep work to do, kind of a lot, but I'll show you the shortcuts that I'm going to take. It won't be a lot of work. And then tomorrow I'm going to make the soup. So let's start making pozole. Let's talk first about the beans. I'm using some pinto beans here. This is just about a pound of dry pinto beans that I rinsed really well and I'm allowing them now to drain. Typically the way you work with dried beans is you soak them for about eight hours. Most people just soak them overnight in salted water. And the reason for salted water, America's Test Kitchen can get very scientific -y about things. They say that the ions in salt will displace the ions in the skin of the beans, thereby making the skin more tender. I like that idea. Then after soaking, you drain them well, rinse them again, and then you simmer them in unsalted water. Because if you cook them in salted water, the salt can make the inside of the bean mealy in texture. So you simmer them for one and a half to two and a half hours in unsalted water until tender. That's a lot of preparation. I'm going to do something very different. I'm going to use my pressure cooker. So let's set this up. I'm going to put my beans now in my pressure cooker. And then cook these in liquid. But what I saw in one recipe that I liked was they cooked the beans in some beer. So I have some beer here that I need to use up. I don't drink beer. But I do use beer when I make bread. These bottles of beer each contain about one and a half cups fluid ounces, 12 fluid ounces, one and a half cups, 350 milliliters. And then I'm going to add a little bit more water to that to bring it up to about halfway, a little bit less than halfway up the side of the pan. Then I add maybe, well, that's a liter of water there. That should be fine. That's four cups, which is about a liter. And then I'm going to put some oil in there because oil will help to prevent the beans from foaming up too much. What happens if it foams up too much? the foam can get in and clog the pressure regulator. Now I can put my cover on this, seal that in place, put this on the stove. This has an indicator on the top that tells me how it's doing as far as cooking. When this comes up to the point where I see two red lines here, that means it's at full pressure. And then once it comes to full pressure, then I cook it for only 20 minutes and then let it cool down, let the pressure settle down naturally, which is about another 20 minutes. 
and the beans will be done. So much better than cooking overnight, or soaking overnight rather, and then cooking for two and a half hours. Let's talk about chili peppers next, because this is all new to me. I've used these before. I know what these are. These are Anaheim chilies. They're a mild chili with almost no flavor at all, actually. This, if I have it correct, is a poblano chili. It's mild in flavor, can be a little bit snappy in spiciness. These are the weird ones because the store, and this is what I learned in my research, that a lot of stores just don't know what they're doing when it comes to labeling chili peppers. The store called these Pasilla, but they spelled the name wrong, P-A-S-S-I-L-A. -S -S it's actually one S and two L's, P-A-S-I-L-L-A, -L -L or Pasilla. But that, according to my research, is the name for the dried chilies. The fresh chilies, which is what these are, these are fresh, are chilaca chilies. They're mild to medium hot. I don't know that I'm going to use all of this in my soup, but I do want to add some chili. What I'm going to do right now while I'm waiting for my beans to cook is I'm going to open these up, clean out the seeds, and then I'm going to roast these in the oven to get them tender and really well cooked. I'm wearing rubber gloves because a lot of the websites that I saw said if you're not familiar with working with peppers, they have a lot of hot stuff in them and you don't want to get it on your fingers and then rub your eyes. The worst of it is where the seeds are. I'm going to move this bowl over to this side. Let's see what I've got inside this poblano. This is all new to me. I am a real gringo when it comes to... Oh, look at that. Virtually no seeds at all. This will probably be as sweet as an apple, huh? Do I have that correct? As I said, I'm a real gringo when it comes to stuff like this because I've never done this. Okay, let's see what I can do here as far as these chilakas. I have no idea what I'm going to find in these. A lot of that stuff on the inside that's supposedly hot. Let's see if I can scoop that out. A lot of seeds. My beans are merely heating away got some olive oil here and I'm going to brush my peppers at least on the inside with some olive oil I've been heating my broiler in the oven with a rack in the upper third of the oven I'm going to bake these until I see them a little bit charred on the outside I'm not going to get them too close to the broiler because I want them to be really tender as well but I'm going to cook them until they look really tender and maybe see a little bit of char on the outside. I'm done with my pepper, so now I can take my gloves off carefully, keep the stuff away from my fingers, put it in a Ziploc bag. Seal it. And then I can throw that in the trash. Here are my peppers now out of the oven. Look how beautiful they look. Those came out perfect. See they're starting to brown on the outside. These are charring a little bit. I've got a Ziploc bag here. I'm going to transfer my peppers to this bag. Oh and they feel tender too. Set that aside. And then I'm going to seal this bag and just let them sweat and cool. My pan now has depressurized. I'm going to be careful when I open this. Lots of steam is going to come out. <laughs> Voila. And then I want to just see how tender the beans are. So I'm just going to lift a few of the beans out. Put them in a little tasting bowl. I don't need many of them. 
And then here's my red handle tasting spoon. Let's see what my beans taste like. At least for tenderness. They're not going to have much flavor right now, but they're, they should be tender. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, I'm ready to drain this now. But I'm going to save that liquid because I'm going to use it, or at least some of it, to cook the pork. What I have here is about 3 pounds, less than 3 pounds, or around 1.3 kilograms of pork shoulder. This is boneless. It does need to be trimmed, though. What I want to end up with is between 1.5 and, and 2 pounds of trimmed pork shoulder meat. That's 680 grams to 900 grams. So I brought my pressure cooker back out again. There's my pork. And I got maybe close to two pounds, maybe 800, 850 grams. Then I'm going to put in that pot with the meat. This is two cloves of garlic that I just crushed. These vegetables are going to come out. They're just there for flavoring. This is half of a large red onion about 10 peppercorns, whole peppercorns, a couple of bay leaves, a good pinch of salt in there, and then this is the liquid from cooking the beans. I might as well use all of it. All right, and the same thing. I'm going to put my lid on there bring it up to full temperature and cook that for 20 to 30 minutes i just want to cook that meat until it's really tender clean up my peppers these i've had a chance to sweat in the bag it's easier i guess just to i was going to cut this off but i guess it's easier just to peel it with your fingers so here are the last of my peppers these are the Pasillas, otherwise known as the chilacas. And what I'm doing with all of these is just kind of cutting them the long way first and then just mincing them kind of fine. So there are my three kinds of peppers chopped Anaheim, Poblano, and Pasilla, otherwise known as chilaca or if your produce manager is illiterate, Pasilla. So here we are now, the end of day one. Yes, that was a lot of work, but for some of the best meals, you get the freshest ingredients and you do all the prep work. In the meantime, the timer went off for the pork. I turned the heat off under that pressure cooker. It's slowly depressurizing now. And as soon as that's fully depressurized, I'll take the lid off, I'll let that cool down a little bit, and then I'll be able to remove the meat from the pan and discard the vegetables and the liquid. Here we are now, day two. Most of the work is over. I did all the prep work yesterday. And you don't need to do all that work that I did. For example, if you don't want to cook pinto beans, you can buy a big can of pinto beans, save you some work. Where I can, I try to use fresh ingredients. I just think it makes the food taste that much better. All I have to do today is dice the other half of that onion, a couple tomatoes, some herbs. That's it. Otherwise, what I'm going to be doing today is simply assembling the soup. So let's make basoli. As I mentioned, I need to dice this onion. I have a safer way of doing this. The chefs cut it and then they draw the knife toward their fingers. I don't like doing that. I quarter the onion and then I always cut down to the cutting board. That's what it's there for. Flip it over. Again, cutting down to the cutting board. Then once I get that done, then cut across. And there's my diced onion. I'm also gonna chop a couple of Roma tomatoes here. Nothing too fancy. I did seed these, but I didn't um, take the skin off. I don't think it matters that much. There's some seeds in there. It's not, they're not perfect. But I, don't, I just don't think it's going to matter much for this dish. I'm going to get these diced up fairly well. Got a pan heating on the stove here. I'm going to put in 
two, three, maybe four tablespoons of olive oil in there. That's regular pure olive oil. Cooking olive oil. It has a higher smoke point than regular rather than um, extra virgin olive oil, which I use as a flavoring oil. And I want to cook these onions over medium heat until they're tender and translucent, about five minutes. So those are looking translucent. Now we should be fine. I'm going to add two to three cloves of garlic that I minced up really fine. I just ran those through a garlic press. And I'm going to cook that for about one minute. So now I'm going to add my tomatoes and I'm going to cook those until they're tender. Three to five minutes. Now what I'm going to be adding is you want about five cups of chicken broth. You can buy the like the Swanson chicken broth they have in the store. I have some homemade chicken stock and I know that's very strong because I concentrate it. So I'm putting three cups in and I'm going to add two cups of water. So I have my broth in there. Five cups is equal to about 1.2 liters. Now I'm going to add the beans. You can use a 28 ounce can which is about 800 grams of cooked pinto beans and add them with liquid and all. In my case I started off with just under one pound of dry pinto beans. You saw me cook them yesterday. And what I ended up with was 29 ounces, about 822 grams of my cooked pinto beans. So I nailed that pretty close. This is a 28 ounce can or 800 grams of white hominy. Those are the corn kernels. This is one can of crushed red tomatoes. I'm going to add some herbs to this. You can use one tablespoon of dried oregano. I have here one teaspoon of fresh oregano. I have some potted herbs outside and the fresh is really strong so I'm not going to add a lot to that. And then I have one teaspoon of ground cumin. If you like a lot of cumin you can add two. You saw me yesterday I roasted some peppers. I don't know how much of these peppers to use. These are the Anaheims. I know I can use a lot of that. What were these? I forgot what those were called. And these were the really sort of hot ones. I'm just going to add a little bit of that. Stir those in. All right. Then I need to bring this up to a boil. I'm going to reduce the heat to low cover this pot and simmer it for 30 minutes. This is the pork that I cooked yesterday. You don't need to shred this really fine, just kind of bite-sized pieces. You can shred it with a pair of forks if you want. Use your fingers. I'm just going to use my fingers. And there is my shredded pork ready for my soup. This now has been cooking for 30 minutes. I'm opening that carefully so that I don't steam my camera. And there's my camera right there. You can see my camera. That's my camera. Oh, and there I am. <laughs> okay. Now I'm ready to stir in the meat. I'm going to bring the heat up to medium high again because that meat's going to Cool this down. That is a big pot of soup. Most of the recipes said 8 to 10 it would feed. Boy, I'm thinking 10 to 15. Okay, I'm going to bring this back up to the boil and then reduce the heat to low again. Let it simmer. I'm already seeing some bubbling. Let it simmer with the lid off and stir it often for another 30 minutes. I just turned the heat off under this. Look how beautifully thick that is. Okay, I'm going to grind some black pepper in there. By the way, I tasted this 
before adding these final seasonings and I can just pick up the flavor of those peppers and that's I like that because it's not an overpowering flavor but I can just pick it up I'm gonna put a couple of good pinches of salt in there because I have a lot of soup here that might not be enough salt because nothing that I worked with was salted I'm not using salted stock in this okay I got my red handle tasting spoon out let me see how this tastes I'm mostly tasting for salt a little bit more salt I got a lot of soup there I don't want it too salty but I don't want it too undersalted either I tend to cook with less salt anyways So that should be fine. One more taste. See what I got here. <laughs> That's excellent. Okay, I'm going to let this sit for a minute while I prepare my garnishes for the top. Okay, I'm ready to see what I've got here. Let's get some of this in a plate. A little bit more, I think. beautiful okay ways to garnish that that I've seen put a couple of lime wedges on the side of the plate some recipes suggested a little bit of chopped cilantro and another said some shredded cheddar cheese like so and when I see something like this the first thought that occurs to my mind that I want even though I know it's not traditional is I want some sour cream that is my pozole <laughs> okay I gotta tell you last night I was trying to think of different ways of like what am I gonna say to the camera if I don't like it because I don't like a lot of Mexican food or what they call Mexican food here in the USA I didn't grow up with it but this looks like it's gonna taste good here it goes Oh my gosh, that's good. <laughs> I am totally shocked. I've never tasted pasoli before. Oh, see, I can just, I get a hint of those peppers without it being over the, overpowering. I'm glad I didn't use much of those peppers that I roasted. Mm. Okay, that is good. Um, this is a late lunch or an early dinner, but excuse me, I'm going to go enjoy my bowl of pasoli. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit my website, mobilehomegourmet.com, and look on the homepage or in the recipe archive.